Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will take a look at STP, Spanning Tree Protocol, and do some basic configurations. Spanning tree is necessary to prevent layer 2 loops, which could otherwise render your network useless. In this topology, for example, without spanning tree, a layer 2 broadcast would loop around the three switches endlessly, and with enough of that in your network, your network is not going to be operating well. Just to clarify that, if switch 1 sends a broadcast, it goes to switch 2 and switch 3. Then, both of them flood the broadcast out every port, except the one they received it on. Then the process repeats, and it will go from switch 1 to switch 2 to switch 3 to switch 1 to switch 2 to switch 3, and also the same thing in the other direction. That's why spanning tree is essential in a case like this. Anyway, let's get started. The first step just asks us some questions about STP. The first is, which version is currently running on the switches? There are multiple versions. For example, common spanning tree, the old original version. Also, per VLAN spanning tree, rapid spanning tree, rapid per VLAN spanning tree. So, which is running on these switches by default? These are all the same model, so let's just check on switch 1. Enable. Show spanning tree summary. Right here, the first line. Switch is in PVST mode. So, there's our answer. PVST is per VLAN spanning tree. That means each VLAN has its own spanning tree instance running, which we can configure individually. You can see that down here. There is VLAN 1, the default VLAN, which I'll generally ignore for this lab, and then our three VLANs, 10, 20, and 30. The next question is, what is the bridge ID for each switch? First, what exactly is a bridge ID? It is a value used to determine the root bridge in spanning tree. It consists of two parts. The bridge priority, which is 32768 by default, plus the MAC address, which is used as a tiebreaker if the bridge priorities are the same. The switch with the lowest bridge ID becomes the root bridge. So let's check switch one's bridge ID. Show spanning tree. So for VLAN 1, the priority is 32769, which is the default priority of 32768 plus the VLAN number 1. Then the MAC address is here, beginning with 0060. Note that the information up here is for the root bridge, and down here is for this switch itself. The information is different, so clearly switch 1 is not the root bridge. Switch 1's bridge ID will be essentially the same for each VLAN, but the priority will differ because the VLAN ID is added to the default priority. See? 32778, 32788, and 32798. Okay, now let's check the bridge ID on switch 2. Enable. Show spanning tree. Again, the priorities will be the same as on switch 1. 32769 for VLAN 1, 32778 for VLAN 10, etc. And here is the MAC address, beginning with 0001. Note that the info down here is the same as the info in the root ID section. And the root ID section itself says, this bridge is the root. So that answers the next question too, as to what is the root bridge for each VLAN. Because we haven't done any configurations yet, the priorities are all the same, so the switch with the lowest MAC address will become the root for all VLANs, switch 2 in this case. Let's quickly take a look at switch 3's bridge ID also. Enable, show spanning tree. Again, the priorities are the same, and the MAC address begins with 0004, so indeed switch 2 has the lowest MAC. Switch 1's MAC began with 0060, the highest, then switch 3 with 0004, 
and then switch to with 0, 0, 0, 0001, the lowest. Okay, the next question is, what is the STP cost of each interface? Well, the interfaces connecting the switches are gigabit ethernet interfaces. They have a default STP cost of four. On the other hand, the interfaces connected to the PCs, which are still actively sending spanning tree BPDUs or bridge protocol data units, even though a switch isn't connected to them, are fast ethernet interfaces, which have a default cost of 19. Look at the show spanning tree command here. You can see gigabit ethernet interfaces with a cost of four and fast ethernet interfaces with a cost of 19. The next question is which interface is blocked and why? Well, you can see on packet tracer which is blocked due to the port lights. Let's just check with the show command on switch one. Let's look at the output of show spanning tree again. You can see that gig01 interface is blocking, as BLK indicates here. Why is that? Well, switch 2 is the root bridge, so all of its ports are designated ports. Switch 1's gig02 interface and switch 3's gig01 interface have the lowest cost to the root for them, so they are root ports and will forward traffic. Now, we have to block one port between switch 1 and switch 3 to prevent loops. So, switch 1 and switch 3 will compare their bridge IDs, and because switch 1's is the highest, it blocks the gig01 port. Okay, finally, let's get to some configurations. Step 2 says to change the spanning tree mode to RPVST, Rapid Per VLAN Spanning Tree. If your switches support Rapid PVST, you really should use it because it allows the network to converge much faster when there are changes. All it takes is one command on each switch. On switch one first. Conf T, spanning tree mode rapid PVST. That's it. Now switch two. Conf T, spanning tree mode rapid PVST. And finally switch three. Conf T, spanning tree mode rapid PVST. Okay, that's it. Now it's time to manipulate the spanning trees a little bit. We're going to change the root bridge for each VLAN and also configure a secondary root to specify which switch we want to be the root if the root fails. Let's go and configure our primary routes on switch one, spanning tree VLAN 10 root primary. Okay, then switch two. Spanning tree VLAN 20 root primary. And then switch three. Spanning tree VLAN 30 root primary. Okay, now let's set the secondary VLANs. Switch three here should be the secondary root for VLAN 20. So spanning tree VLAN 20 root secondary. Then switch one. Spanning tree VLAN 30, root secondary. And finally, switch two. Spanning tree VLAN 10, root secondary. Okay, now both of these commands adjust the spanning tree priority of the switch down. Let's check what the priorities are here on switch two. Do show spanning tree. Look at VLAN 10, for which switch two is the secondary root. It brings the priority down to 28672 plus 10 for the VLAN ID. Now look at VLAN 20, for which it is the root. 24576 plus 20 for the VLAN ID. Okay, finally, we are going to enable port fast and BPDU guard on the appropriate interfaces. These should be enabled on interfaces not connected to another switch. BPDU guard will put an interface in the air disabled mode if a BPDU is received on the port, and port fast allows interfaces to start forwarding without having to wait for the spanning tree to converge. Now you can enable port fast here from global configuration mode with spanning tree port fast default, which will enable it on all access ports.
You can also configure it at the interface level. Let's do that. Interface range F01 to 3. Spanning tree port fast. Spanning tree BPDU guard enable. Okay, let's do it on switch 1 next. Interface range F01 to 3. Spanning tree port fast. Spanning tree BPDU guard enable. Finally, switch 3. Interface range F01 to 3. Spanning tree port fast. Spanning tree BPDU guard enable. Okay, so this lab was a little longer than usual, but there's a lot to say about spanning tree and it's a big exam topic. Make sure you're familiar with everything on the exam topics list before you write the exam. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.